nscaler454 here welcome back to the channel in today's video we're finally going to lay some roads which i know i've said it before but to show you that i'm serious i've done some experiments with different products and paints to get an idea or um, get a look that i'm satisfied with this is straight plaster of paris with a coating of relatively thick neutral gray 5 acrylic paint uh, this is Plaster of Paris with a black water mix. This is DAP Professional Grade Spackle, which basically repels acrylic paint, so it's terrible. This is, um, the same product, DAP Professional Grade Spackle, mixed with black paint. And though it does fix the color issue, it's just a little too dark. This, however, I will say, it's not a bad color for concrete, so maybe it's good for a different application. This is plaster mixed with mortar, and I do really like it, but it didn't stick to the foam, which is interesting. And as you can expect, mortar is very, very hard when it's dry. This is plaster mixed with sanded grout. This is the same, but with a black water wash, or sorry, black water mix. Uh, this, I don't remember what that is. These two are a different sanded grout mixed with plaster. Uh, this is also a slightly different ratio i do like this one i really like the finish of it i think it looks good however i do feel like the paint maybe it's a little too tan and i need a little bit more blue in there but oh and the other option is foam with a you know just some different kind of acrylics mixed on top of it and i do really like that so to show how I get through this, stay tuned. So we got all of the cork down and I made some filler pieces out of polystyrene which I'm going to paint a concrete color and then I can draw out my roads where I want them and then I'm going to remove all of this and then I can start taping things off including my borders which I'm going to use this foam adhesive tape that I got off of Amazon and then we can start plastering. I roughly drew out the lines to my roads and anywhere there's going to be pavement and I used this little tool that I built to make it easier to draw those lines and keep it nice and even. Now the distance between these two pens is 1.75 inches which if I was to scale that up to 1 to 1 it would be about 23 feet. Now keep in mind the edges of the road are going to be square when I pull the tape up and I have to blend that with some extra plaster and so when it's all said and done my total road width should be about 25 feet wide in real life. So I think that will be plenty for what I'm doing. So now I just got to go about laying down my foam tape, like I've started down here. And that will give me an edge to, you know, put the plaster in between and, you know, make my roads nice and flat. I imagine this is going to take about an hour or two. And rather than showing you that on video, I'm just going to snap my fingers and it will be done. So that did take a while, but we do have our foam tape down. And if I haven't mentioned it, this is 1 16th or 0 062 thick, which is pretty much perfect because most of the buildings that I have sit on a 0 060, you know, base or whatever. So that will fit up nice and flush in the places that I need it. So that's good. We have all the stuff covered up. This wax paper is great because it covers up a lot of area and plaster doesn't stick to it at all. So that's really good. With the exception of this, the crossings right here, I need to put something on the inside of the track to keep the plaster from it because obviously you need grooves for the wheels to go through. Now with 
Pico N scale track. You need about 35 thou on each side, which if you had some 040 styrene, you can strip that on each side. I'm sure that would work, but I don't have any. So I have some ideas, but I haven't quite figured it out. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Instead, I'm just gonna get started on throwing down some plaster and hopefully it looks good. Because I want a textured finish to my pavement, I'm going to blend some sanded grout with some plaster. Now I am using color Haystack, which honestly is a little too tan for my liking, but this just happens to be what I have at home. Uh, a little more gray would be certainly desirable. I'm gonna do two parts plaster to one part grout. Uh, I think that'll give me the texture that I want. But first, I need to mix up a colored water. So we have our cold water here and some black ivory paint. Do I know how much paint to put in this? No, I do not. But I'm just gonna start and see what it looks like. We'll mix in our blend of plaster and grout. There's more. Jeez. Not a touch of blue. I came up with a solution to covering the inner rails of my crossings. I took some green painter's tape and I glued it upside down onto a piece of cardboard and then cut it in 44,000 strips. And now I can tape these into place. So we've completed laying down all the plaster for our roads. You can see right here at the crossing where it's quite a bit thicker. It's still quite dark because it's taken longer to dry. 
But now we're gonna pull up all the strips uh, while it's still, you know, not fully hardened. And that should prevent, or at least reduce the chances of cracking. And uh, let's see how it looks. With the tape pulled up, it looks pretty good, though I noticed the crossings are still too wet to sand, so I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is blending the edges with the ground below, especially around these crossings where it's so high. So I'm gonna mix up some plaster and just use my finger and goop it in there and whatever I gotta do. And, and then from there I can, you know, manually manipulate it with sanding and, and carving. And that should give it an overall better look. So I'm not going to film that just because it's so messy and really what are you going to see. So when I get back to you, you'll see what it looks like. You can see the blending that I'm talking about. Now I'm going to take a scraper and just knock off these high spots here while the plaster is still somewhat damp. And that should save me a lot of time when it comes to sanding. Unfortunately, I do have to make another batch of plaster and just finish off here because... It dried out before I could finish. So it's just the nature of the beast with plaster of Paris, but let's hit this up and there, oh yeah, it comes off nice and easy. I kept using the scraper right here until I got to the layer of track, so I think I can pull these strips out right now. So. One. And two. Not perfectly, you know, cleaned out, but I think that'll do. So our plaster is all dry and sanded down. For the larger high spots, I actually used a metal file to take those down and it made quick work of things. I then moved to a 220 sanding block, which probably is a little too aggressive because it can leave some gouges and stuff into your plaster. Maybe that's because it was still too uh, damp, not dry enough. I then moved to a 320 and 400 uh, sanding paper, which didn't do a lot, and that could be because this was too dry, as the grout in my uh, plaster mixture, when it dries, it dries very hard, so maybe that's the, the case there. Now, speaking of the sanded grout plaster mixture, you can see there's some deviation and inconsistencies in the texture, as right here... This is much more sandy than it is right here. And when I put paint to this, that's going to highlight all of these different textures and inconsistencies. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? To be determined, but it should be interesting. Also, you can see these deeper holes and divots and whatever. That is a great opportunity because any real life pavement out there has potholes and patches and so to actually be able to do that to the actual plaster I think that's going to be really fun to do and I'm excited how that's going to turn out. When it comes to paint I'll be honest with you guys I am super nervous. Even though I did some tests I never found a paint color that I was perfectly happy with. But one thing I can tell you is do not go with a solid black color for your pavement because yeah asphalt does come out black when it's laid down but when it's in the sunlight and the elements hit it it's it turns into like a gray or grayish blue color so i just don't recommend solid black i don't think you'll be very happy now in my case 
I am going to go with like a layered technique, just like I do with my, you know, rocks and all that kind of stuff. And I'm debating, do I lay down a layer of black and then highlight it with the gray blue later? Or do I go down with a layer of the bluish gray and then highlight it with black later? Or do I mix, you know, black and gray together and just kind of do some sort of hybrid and hope it turns out? Now my thinking is to start with the lighter color because it's easier to darken colors later than it is to lighten them. So typically I use natural gray number five, but this time I'm going to use this dolphin gray, which has a lot more blue in it, which is exactly what I want. So I think I'm gonna go mostly with this, darken down with a little bit of ivory black, and that's gonna be my base layer and then we'll go from there. So we're gonna start with our dolphin gray, and we'll throw in a little bit of black. Now, I have found that the gray really overpowers the black, so just be aware of that. And now I'm going to use a pretty large brush here And we'll start our mixing. So now I'm going to put water down on my layer or on my pavement to start with will help the blending you don't have to be stingy with the water either okay here we go With our first layer of paint down, and even though it's not quite dry yet, you can see the irregularities in how the plaster absorbed the paint. And right here, you can see it really sucked it in and it's quite dark. Whereas right here, there's this whole section that really didn't take much of the paint at all. And I just realized that looks like a dip. So I have to figure out how to blend this in a little bit better because I can't have such a contrast between two different shades. So how I add in a little bit more of this gray blue or the blacks, I might have to be a little more aggressive in some of these areas versus some of the, you know, the darker areas. I don't know. I'll figure that out. But now I'm going to work on the potholes and filling this in with some plaster. I'm going to cut some of this out to make it a little more square. And I found a huge low spot right here. So I'm going to try to level that off as well. Now, if you noticed, I have some styrofoam wrapped around where I have my storage tanks because a lot of people said, if you want realism, you need to have a berm around them. Now, even though it's not correct in the sense I don't have a 360 degree berm, I had to compromise a little bit. So I think this will at least give me something just to add some of the realism. And since I'm going to be plastering for my potholes, I might as well do that at the same time.
So we have our patchwork completed. I did some sanding to bring it down to the same level and then I went over it with a damp rag just to clear off a lot of that residue. Naturally, it did go through the paint layer and in some cases went straight down into the plaster. Not a big deal, I think I can fix that and whatever, I think it'll be okay. But now I'm going to use a fine tip brush and I'm going to paint these with uh, a nearly straight black acrylic paint, I think, because I want this to look like you know new asphalt. Uh, maybe a tick of that dolphin gray will be in there, but I'm going to do that and then we can start working on adding some more depth to the rest of our pavement. When adding a darkening layer, make sure you coat your surface with water. And I mean a lot of water, because the water is what's doing the blending. I can already see that it is actually lifting the paint. I mean, a sealer might have been the way to go with this before I started, but you know what? Guess what? So we're done our darkening layer of paint and I went over it a couple of times in a few different areas with different shades. Some areas with a much more black kind of finish to try to highlight some of the textures and even though it looks really black on camera, um, it's not as bad but it definitely highlights those features and there's definitely a lot going on. As for the potholes, for whatever reason, these ones just would not take the paint, so I had to go over it with a much darker, uh, thicker uh, layer of paint. And it doesn't look as good as I'd like, whereas this one looks really good. I'm very happy with this. You can see just how much of that blue is showing up with that dolphin gray uh, in it, so when you're doing potholes, do not go with a you know, a pure black paint, it just doesn't work. That's a drip from the paint and I can't get that out. Oh well, I'll try to use that. Uh, I'll work around that later on with some highlights and details. But obviously it's still very wet. I'll let this dry completely, which probably take about 24 hours. And I imagine all this is going to brighten up quite a bit and we'll see what it looks like uh, once it's dry and then we'll finish off with our final um, layers of paint. So I let the paint dry overnight, and I gotta say, this does not look very good. I don't know what happened. It's almost like the the darkening layer, along with the 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 water that I use, it like it pulled up the gray layer and then separated, and then I'd have some spots dry with like some black, some that just pulled up and it's kind of white, some of it's blue. You know, like look at that in there. Like what the heck happened, man? So now I gotta figure out how to fix this. <laughs> that could be a bit of a challenge, but disappointed at the moment. Two days later. I have the color of the roads very close to where I want them to be. There are some areas that may need some extra work, but for the most part, it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some details like cracks and whatnot, which is really enhances the realism of your pavement. And I tried this a couple of different ways. Pencil, I have tried, and yeah, you can get a nice looking line, but what happens is there's a very distinct sheen, a reflection, and I don't know if you can see that just off the tip of the, you know, lead, the graphite or whatever of the, the pencil. That kind of reflection, that shows up into the lighting and it doesn't look very realistic. So I use just this 0 0.05 uh, what a pigment liner, and I find this has been working really good and I just go in, give it some zigzaggy little kind of crack-like appearance to it. 
And away you go, right? And I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to overdo it, but I'm also going to try not to, you know, be too, I guess, not put enough cracks in. I think there's, there's a certain amount that I think will look good. So we'll try that. And one thing that you got to try to do that, that someone kind of made the suggestion of was that when you're doing your cracks, it's not like a tree branch. You don't just go out and keep branching off, branching off in one direction. They can crack, you know, backwards and forwards. Be random. I think those are going to be some good guidelines to, to stay with. And I try to use a, a very gentle touch to it. I don't want to push too heavily. So I imagine if I wanted to try making a deeper crack, I could, you know, go a little bit deeper. So maybe you're in here, I'll throw a couple of deeper voids, maybe. Well, that about does it. To get things to look a little bit better, I went over everything with a very light coat of the Dolphin Grey. And then I went over everything with a couple of layers of a near black wash. And I'm talking very thin, very light wash colors. And I think it has blended everything in really, really well. I think it has amplified our cracks. I think they highlight those now. And look at the textures. Oh man, it has really brought out the textures of our pavement. Like this obviously looks like a very old and used kind of roadway. It's not brand new, which is what I was going for. Um, I was going to go over everything with an airbrush and some white paint to, to bring out some highlights, but I don't think it's really necessary and it's a risk because I might ruin the whole thing. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. I will be taking a, an airbrush and some black paint to simulate some rubber marks and where the trucks go, but I think I need to have the buildings in place just to ensure there's no hard transitions and, you know, make sure it all blends together. Um, there won't be any yellow lines because it's a refinery roadway, but there will be some white lines in our crossings here, here, and here. I just have to have the right material. Uh, someone has suggested uh, a certain kind of pen, so I might go that route because paint, I do not want it to bleed onto this. No, I don't want that. And, um, also, I really like... Now that I have all the dirt kind of painted in, it's really starting to look like something. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Did it? Uh, did I do okay or did I completely botch it? If you like the video, obviously hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. And thanks for watching.